How's it going everybody? My name is Scott Stewart. I'm the owner of l, &L Grooming and today we are going to make a brush. Uh, this brush is for a local. It's always nice to be able to serve a local market. And he had a really interesting idea. Uh, this is this is my third video. Uh, and I've had three failures prior to, to this, but I am optimistic that this one will be successful. I've learned a lot in the uh, huh, the original attempts. So what we're going to be doing is suspending a stone in a transparently dyed amber handle. Reminds me of Jurassic Park. I can guarantee that there will be a mosquito uh, mosquito encased in amber brushes coming at some point just because Jurassic Park's awesome. Uh, first attempt and first failure, for some reason I assumed that stone would somehow be less dense than a medium to light viscosity resin. As you can see it sank straight to the bottom. So that didn't work out. Uh, this was my proof of concept which ironically enough uh, turned out better than the two that I've made since for various reasons. Uh, this top of the the top of the brush here is this is just flat black opaque dye and resin. Uh, I laminated the two pieces together and that's what I'm going to be doing on the final brush. Uh, things that I've learned so far uh, first off the molds that I'm going to be using today are two inches rather than the the usual one and a half inch diameter molds that I use because to get the desired shape and to account for any mishaps during the lamination process I just I need more material to work with that's the uh, that was the cause of the most recent failure the failure prior to that uh, for no real apparent reason I decided to use a different uh, adhesive to laminate the pieces together and the uh, glue did not hold while it was on the lathe and it blew apart. So uh, to to do the black I'm going to be doing just alumilite black dye. This is a nice opaque black that's exactly what I'm looking for. To do the amber, I have this Cast and Craft uh, transparent amber dye. This is good stuff. I bought it specifically for this project. I got a couple other colors too that I'll be uh, experimenting with in the future. Uh, so suspending the stone, I don't know how in focus this will be. I am relying on autofocus today. Uh, what I did to combat the sinking stone effect, uh, for this one I used monofilament, which is essentially fishing line. I don't know if you can see it uh, right there, but it is pretty visible. It was more visible than I wanted it to be, certainly more visible than I expected it to be. So for the attempts since then, uh, I decided to go with horse hair that I just happened to have on hand for a different project. I had to be extremely careful with this. Uh, thankfully this, <laughs> so real quick, this is two popsicle sticks uh, super glued together and the way that this works is I take my mold and submerge it like that do my absolute best to get it centered, which the last one that I made was pretty much dead on center. It just had other problems. Uh, and also, interestingly enough, uh, I don't know the physics involved here, but the stone, once it is submerged, all of the air bubbles stick to it. They just immediately grab onto it and stick to it and when I put it in the pressure pot uh, those all of those bubbles combine into 
like a shell around it, and it's uh, it it looks like mercury, honestly, or or some a really shiny silver uh, like hematite. So, anyways, that's enough talking. Uh, gonna get this going. I have already prepared my molds uh, prior to this video, just because there's there's nothing interesting about watching me form clay around PVC pipe. Today, as always, I will be using Alumalite Clear, which I am low on. I ordered 16 more pounds today. Since I'm using larger molds, I'm going to use more resin, obviously, than I normally do. I, I guarantee you that was far more resin than I needed, but I would rather have a little bit of waste than, well, really waste another stone at this point. And you talk about using way too much resin. I definitely use too much. But that's okay. And I did my math wrong, I'm reasonably certain so to use even more resin. All right. Dip my fingers right in there, so. They will definitely be sticky. Really trying to get to the bottom of this cup with my popsicle stick without plunging my hand in here. Alright, that looks good. pretty evenly split. This is the transparent amber. Eight drops for eight ounces. I've been doing about, well, exactly one drop per ounce, and I have been pleased with the results, so not gonna change that. And the black. That will be plenty. This this Alumilite dye is very concentrated, which is good. And 
There we go. That is a nice, deep, opaque black. Now I have my molds here. the amber the black have a lot of leftover black but no molds set up for it so nothing I can really do about that let's see if I can move the air bubbles out of the way a little bit Maybe scoop some out to try and uh, prevent this from having the mercury-esque shell. Alright, end of the pressure pot. And I'll be back once I demold these, and we'll take a look at them, see how they look. Alright, so I have demolded the blanks. Clearly this is the black one, it's just a nice flat black. And this is the blank with the stone in it. Very close to centered, not quite, but pretty close. Pretty close. So now what I'm going to do is figure out where I want to cut this. The, uh, the overall height we're going for is about 55 millimeters. Uh, he wants the black portion to only be tall enough to cover uh, the hole that I drill for the knot. So this will, it'll be reasonably thin, maybe 14 millimeters. So I'm going to do all that off camera. It's, it's not very interesting to watch. Uh, then I'm going to glue the pieces together. Once I've done that, I'll be back and we can start turning. All right, so now I have the, uh, the blanks glued together and it should be good and cured. Uh, so next what I'm going to do, and I'll, I'm going to run through everything that I'm going to do because from this point forward, it's just going to be sped up uh, with some sort of free music over it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to chuck this in here, uh, part it off where I want it. I have a small line here, but I'll definitely remeasure before I do that. So I'll part it off at about 14 millimeters or so. Uh, at that point, I will uh, true up the front a bit. I will then drill a hole. Uh, once I drill the hole, I will take my expanding collet, put it in that hole, remove my chuck, use this collet chuck, so it'll be held like this, and then I will uh, turn it to shape and then spend forever polishing it, uh, most of which I will most likely leave out of the video just because it's, it's boring. It's the exact same thing happening like 15 times. So that's it. So I'm gonna
Okay, so my camera died uh, while I was in the middle of parting this off and drilling the hole, so thankfully not too much was missed. All I did was <clears throat> drill the hole here and mount it, and I trued this up just a little bit more and marked uh, the total height of the brush. Uh, so sorry about that, and I will get back to it. All right, and the customer's happy with the shape, so now I'm going to part this off real quick. Uh, gonna make this just a little bit concave, and then I will polish it.
All right, and it is polished and buffed. Uh, I think it looks really good. You can see the stone in there in the middle and then through the side. It's going to be a bore brush, so that's what it looks like. Thanks for watching.